Hi AppSec engineers, in this video, we'll be looking at how you can set up very advanced security monitoring using AWS CloudWatch. Now, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take up a single example of that. We're going to set up a monitor for SSH login failures, and we're going to configure that in CloudWatch to provide some alerts and some additional capabilities in terms of triggering webhooks and so on. So with that out of the way, let's get started and let's get started now. CloudWatch is AWS's native monitoring and logging service. Now, CloudWatch has a whole host of functionalities, but one of the key functionalities that CloudWatch has is the ability to log and monitor data that is generated within AWS, either from AWS resources or from AWS services itself. Now, CloudWatch also has the ability to configure things like alarms and metrics which means that you can set up metrics to say that if an SSH login failure is above one or one and above, you can essentially trigger some kind of an alarm for that. And based on the alarm trigger, you can perform some actions. So based on if the event actually happens and the alarm is triggered, that can trigger certain actions and that can trigger certain events. So for instance, let's say an SSH failure alarm is triggered. Let's say two or three SSH failures triggers an alarm and that alarm in turn triggers a message to Slack that says, hey, somebody is trying to brute force their way into your, uh, through the SSH into your servers. Now, this is extremely useful security monitoring automation. Now, this is what we're going to be doing in this lab. And we're going to be taking up a lab from one of our courses in AppSec Engineer, which is AWS Security Monitoring with CloudWatch and CloudTrail. And we're going to take this lab up to just demonstrate to you how this can be done. Now, this is just an example of what you can do with CloudWatch. You can do a whole host of things like this with CloudWatch and CloudWatch alarms and so on and so forth. So this is going to be quite a complex lab. It's going to have a lot of moving parts. And I'm going to take you through step by step as to how this works with CloudWatch and of course with other automation pieces that we're going to set up as part of this. So I'm going to get started with the lab next. All right. So I've opened up AppSec Engineer and since I have access to an AppSec Engineer account, as well as the Pro Plus, I also have access to the cloud sandboxes on AppSec Engineer. Now here, I'm gonna to go to the course, which is essentially AWS Security Monitoring with CloudRot and CloudTrail, and I'm gonna go into the labs and we're gonna get started with this. Now, this is a very interesting course, and this is me coming up again on video, but let me, anyway, let me just take you through some of the course uh, content that we have. We have a lot of videos, a lot of interesting labs that uh, we've come up with here. I'm gonna take up the SSH failure monitoring lab. Now, this is what we're gonna do. This is the example that we're gonna be taking up in this particular case. And I'm gonna start with the lab itself and show you how it works. Now, this is one of our most popular courses in the AWS Learning Path, and it teaches people very practical ways of setting up different types of security monitoring and logging with AWS, all right? So with that in mind, let's just start the lab. And this lab, since I'm using a Pro Plus account, I also have access to AWS sandboxes, which means that I don't need to bring my own AWS account. I can actually just use AppSec Engineer's AWS sandbox environment to deploy it without any problem. That's very easy to work with. All right, so let's, as we're going through the lab, we're just going to wait for the lab to spin up. But in the meantime, we have two approaches in all our AWS labs. You have the DIY approach where you can do it yourself by writing things out from scratch, or you can essentially go with a pre-written approach. I'm gonna go with a pre-written approach, but I'm still gonna explain what's happening here. So here, you'll see that I am first setting up a VPC with a public and private subnet. I'm also setting up a key. I'm just generating some random value here. That's not necessary, that's not super important, just a random string. I'm first creating a VPC because I'm going to deploy some servers on that VPC. This is going to be a public. Some of it is going to be public. Now, the rest of it is essentially as setting up parts of the VPC, right? Or at least this part, this segment is as setting up parts of the VPC. So we're going to set up an internet gateway. We're going to set up a routing table that allows the VPC access to the internet gateway. And we're also going to set up a NAT interface for that particular internet gateway. So it's called NAT gateway, but we're setting up a NAT gateway to allow access to the public subnet so that the public subnet can access the internet. Outside of that, what we're doing is, this is more of us setting up the public subnets. Now this is really important simply because we're setting up the network and as part of this network, we want to showcase how this works. This is not super important for the purpose of the lab itself, but it's just a pre-setup for the lab. 
The other thing that we're doing is we're providing, we're creating a security group. This is not ideal. We should not be doing it this way. But since we are doing this to demonstrate this example, we're giving it ingress from everywhere, egress to everywhere. So we're just allowing all ingress, all egress. We're then creating an SSH key pair, which is going to be used for an EC2 server. Then we're going to be setting up a server called the logging server. Now the logging server is basically the server that is going to actually behave as our test bed, right? We're going to try an SSH into that server and we're going to try an SSH with the wrong SSH keys or wrong passwords into that server. And it's going to capture these SSH logging attempts. It's going to capture these SSH logging attempts with a tool called fail to ban. Fail to ban is a very popular SSH logging tool which captures such as logging failures and things like that, which you can use for further enrichment and analysis. So this is what we're going to be doing. The next thing we're doing is we are going to have the EC2 server that we are creating write logs to CloudWatch, right? So it's going to write watch logs to CloudWatch. It's also going to put some metric data. Remember, we're setting up an alarm or a metric to say that if you have SSH logins that are more than one, that is going to create a metric of sorts. That's going to be a number metric. And that's going to have an alarm associated with it as well, right? So we go through all this in the course, the alarms and things like that, but I'm just telling you how this is working. Then finally, we also have some additional setup here, which is in the logging server, we're adding a capability where we are going to set up fail to ban and we're going to set up some files related to fail to ban and how that works and so on, right? So this is going to locally execute inside the EC2 server. Finally, this is another thing that we're going to do, which is very important, that every single time you start logging the SSH failures inside the EC2 server and fail to ban, it's going to go into var log secure. And we have set up a filter here, a CloudWatch log filter, which, so the EC2 is going to constantly put publishing logs to CloudWatch. That's what's going to happen. And every single time it publishes the logs, we're going to trigger a Lambda function. Now, a Lambda function is typically used in AWS to trigger a event-based pattern, right? So let's say an SSH login from this IP address is disallowed, then it writes it into the logs or it failure is written into the logs that can go to CloudWatch that will trigger a Lambda function. That Lambda function can create a security group that would block access to that server from that IP address. So you can trigger all kinds of these very interesting security monitoring and security automation use cases because you use Lambda with AWS. So that's what's really happening here. It's processing the log and if it finds a failure indication, it's going to just block that access. Then it's going to, we are going to create a CloudWatch filter, a CloudWatch metric and a CloudWatch metric alarm. It's going to say that anything more than one. So in a 60 second period, if there's anything more than one SSH failure, then this is going to trigger this alarm and it's going to write this as a dashboard, things like that. We're going to create a dashboard, a custom dashboard for SSH failures. Finally, we are going to set up our Lambda function and this Lambda function is going to get triggered every single time a log is written. It will check whether there's a failure and which IP address is captured as a failure. So I'm logging in, let's say, from IP address 1.1.1.1, and I'm trying to log in and trying to brute force the SSH, and it's captured that IP address as trying to brute force. Then the Lambda function will block me, and then it will also trigger a webhook that says, hey, you know what, uh, this person is trying to log into our SSH. So we're also setting up a webhook. There's a whole bunch of things happening, right? There's a whole bunch of things happening that we're going to be doing, all right? So this is the lab, and this is what we're going to do. So I'm just going to move the instructions to the other screen because I need those to be able to actually work on the lab. So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of things happening in this lab, and I just want to make sure that everybody understands that. Let's open up the terminal and get started with first creating our AWS environment with our sandbox. This is a very simple command that you can just use and it creates your AWS sandbox environment. That's really that easy. So once I go in here, sometimes AWS is still not spun up that environment yet. I think that right, looks like it has. Takes a couple of seconds for AWS, although it's much faster for us. All right, so this is me logging into our sandbox AWS environment. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to run the free pre setup requirement or pre written approach. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run a file called the pre setup.py. So pre setup.py. So this is going to be the SSH 
custom metric and uh, SSH custom metric, we have a Python file that we've set up here. Now let's see what this is doing. Now this is going to create a Lambda function. This is going to uh, take in some data and push that data. Uh, it's going to rewrite some variables. That's really what it's doing. That's what the pre setup is doing. So it's basically going to use the Slack object and it's just doing some pre setup when it comes to writing this, changing out some variables in the Terraform script. That's basically what is happening here. So it's downloading something, it's installing something. You can see that it's curling this, installing some stuff, and then coming back with some JS file that we're going to use to write the webhook, the final webhook. All right. So finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Terraform init. I'm going to initialize Terraform. Now that the pre setup is done, I'm going to initialize Terraform and then I'm going to apply it and approve it. So, this is what I'm doing. Apply it. So, what is happening here is that we have a whole bunch of things that are being set up. We have our CloudWatch, we have our VPC, we have our NAT gateway, we have our SSH, we have our log groups created, log metric filter that is created. Uh, Lambda is getting created. Uh, so Lambda is created as a zip file. You'll see that's what the pre-setup.py did. Created it as a zip file so that I can just write it into the Lambda function and the Lambda function starts getting triggered every single time. So this is, I'm just waiting for the entire stack to get deployed. It's also going to deploy the server inside that VPC, the logging server, still creating it, still creating all the necessary things. So the idea here is to make sure that we have our server set up. It has failed to ban setup inside the server, and that is configured to start measuring these SSH login failures, right? So that's basically what we want to do. So just waiting for this to spin up. And in the meantime, you'll start to, if you're logged into the console, you'll actually start to see some of these changes taking place as well you'll start to see the alarms being configured. You'll start to see all those things being configured. See that I think all alarms, yeah, you'll see that it's already been set up. We have not triggered anything, which is why the alarm is not showing up. It's not, doesn't have much data yet because we've not started attacking or we've not started trying to attack with our SSH log and brute force. So you'll see that we have our EC2 set up. We have our Lambda set up. We also have an SSH key that we've created. We've done all of this stuff. Right. So now let's first look at our Lambda and see what's happening here, because this is what gets triggered. Once we start logging in or trying to attempt to log into our SSH, the Lambda gets triggered. Right. So once the Lambda gets triggered, the Lambda does something. So let's look at what the Lambda is doing here. So it writes from CloudWatch logs. It essentially says that. So this is not blocking anything, although you can set up this Lambda to block a bunch of stuff. You can essentially say that, look, in this case, start to push. This is set up like a Slack webhook. So imagine it's, we don't have Slack in this case, but imagine that it's Slack. You can just set it up to say that every single time you get a message from this that has a failure, post that message to this API class. Right? So that's basically what we're doing here. So now let's go ahead and log into that server and make sure that our environment is properly set up. I'm just making sure that the server and the environment is properly set up. This. We need a different, so I need to change the EC2 IP address to make sure that our EC2 IP address is correctly. All right, so now we have logged into our server. Oh, I think I need to go chmod. Yes, chmod 400 ASC SSH. Key. There is a particular SSH key, which is some random value. Just see here. ASC SSH. ASC seclog .pen. Okay. I think that's the one. PH mod. All right. So this should be good. Now let's SSH into that with the key. Yeah, so we've got in. So now here we need to check whether our fail to ban is actually working as intended. So you'll see that uh, jail list for SSH, number of jails, there's no jail list right now. Let's see the status. So you'll see that the total band, current band IP list, there is no. So I'm going to essentially now try and set up our listener. 
So just making sure it's just going to set up this web hook. Okay. Just, so just coming out of this. And so we've made sure that it is done. So now that we have this, let's actually set up our web hook to get the message from the metric, right? From the alarm. And now when we get the alarm, we should be able to get the metric from there. So we have to install a few dependencies before that. And let's do that. Finally, let's install our first dependency, the only dependency that we need for this, which is Flask. This is so this is us behaving like Slack, right? So it's imagine that this is Slack. So this is working on a port 5000 of our server IP. So if you look at our server IP, it's this, and you go on port 5000 slash this, you'll see that it is set up to receive messages. Right now, it's not receiving any messages because you're not trying to log in using all of those things. You're not trying to do anything else with it. So now what we are going to do is we're going to try and log in as the bad, some bad user. Let's just SSH dash I A C. So this would be essential. Okay. So let me try and initiate some failed logins, right? So I'm going to say bad user at whatever at our e EC2 server, right? So I'm going to essentially log in as a bad user of that EC2 server. There's no user called bad user, so it should fail. So you'll see that it's denied. Let's try again. So again, denying. Let's try again. Again, it's denying. So now, hopefully, CloudWatch should have caught something in the alarm, or the alarm should have triggered, and CloudWatch should have caught something in the alarm. So it does take a little bit of time for that to show, but you'll see that once it starts showing, you'll see that it will trigger that timeline so it should start showing up pretty soon and once it starts showing our lambda function should be triggered and you see that it's already done that so it actually has triggered this it says that log events timestamp somebody has tried to log in invalid bad user from this so it's actually been able to catch that and i think it's in an alarm state i'm just trying to see where it's in the alarm state oh, yeah i think it's now shown up in the alarm state you'll see that now it's in the alarm state so at this particular point in time, you will see that there has been a failure count of one. So there has been a failure count of one and it's currently in the alarm state. Yeah, you'll see that it's in the alarm state. So we are able to track this and we are able to manage the tracking for this through that. So let me just try and log in a few more times with the same, with a different user maybe. So this is really cool because what's happening is that every single time we have an SSH wrong login or bad login, fail to ban is acting up. And not just is it acting up, we are able to trigger the alarm. And from the alarm, we are able to trigger a Lambda function that will write it to Slack or send your SecOps team some kind of a message that says, hey, you need to take immediate action to fix this. So this is really powerful. One of the ways you can automate a lot of this. In fact, you can go to the next level. And this is something we are training in our course at Black Hat uh, on attacking and defending AWS, Azure, and GCP apps. We actually have a lab where it auto contains. As soon as wrong logins start to come in, it can start uh, changing the fail to ban configurations, start blocking those IPs, or even blocking the security groups for SSH and things like that. So it's really powerful what you can do with these sort of automations with CloudWatch metrics, alarms, and of course, Lambda functions integrated with the whole whatever services that you're running on top of AWS. Security automation with AWS, especially with things like CloudWatch, Lambda, CloudWatch alarms, and several other associated areas in AWS is highly underrated. You can use AWS and its associated features or its associated services, especially in CloudWatch and CloudTrail, to do very, very powerful monitoring, security monitoring, and alerting capabilities. This gives you a lot more control over your cloud environments. And it also gives you a lot of different feedback loops, which is what you really need when you're dealing with cloud environments that uh, you can really uh, set up in a comprehensive way. Uh, so this is just one example, what we just demonstrated in the video. And I hope you enjoyed watching this. Please write to us if you have any questions. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.